Sugar, 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 fiber, 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 sugar, 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 fiber, carbohydrates. Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Mr. Balsiger and Mr. Stockman, and this is our lecture about carbohydrates. Hmm. And we are making a video about carbohydrates. Glad you're here. In this video, we want you to answer three questions, bring them to class so that we have evidence you actually watched the video. Question number one. What is the difference between atoms and molecules? Write this question in your journal. Leave room to answer it. You'll see these questions again at the end of the show. Question number two. What elements are in carbohydrates? You may already know the answer to that. And what ratio will they be found? Hmm. Ratio. Ratio. Question number three. Make a labeled sketch of a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, <laughs> disaccharide, and polysaccharide. Three sketches labeled. On with the show. Hmm. Is that syrup there on the side? I love me some maple syrup. Mm. So some foods that you like to eat have carbohydrates in them. Some examples of carbohydrates are sugars, starches, and fiber. I'm sure you've all heard those three words before. Carbohydrates. Before we can talk about what makes up a carbohydrate, we have to know you know the difference between the term molecule and Adam. So let's take a look at these lists. We put them on each side on purpose. Over here, we have some molecules. And molecules would be like a big Lego sculpture. And that big Lego sculpture is made up of individual blocks. And so for the carbohydrates, those building blocks are three different atoms or three different elements and those are listed on the right. These will be called atoms. These are the individual pieces. Hydrogen would be the little one bump Lego. It's a hydrogen. Carbon might be something like a four bump Lego. And oxygen might be something like a two-bump Lego. You put all those atoms together to build yourself a molecule. So we build molecules out of the single units, atoms. Sweet. Got it. That's question one. Answer it. Pause if you need to. Now, what are carbohydrates? And if you break that word down, you've probably already got the answer. Carbo. The refers to carbon. And hydrate, like if I'm hydrate. to hydrate myself, I have consumed some water. I'm dehydrated. I should go drink water. Me too. Now, they're always found in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio in carbohydrates. So that would be like 1 carbon to 2 hydrogens to 1 oxygen. Here's an example. 1 to 2 to 1. Even if it's backward. Or forwards. It's always the same. Let's look at an example. Yeah. Now, I think I just said this a moment ago, for every one carbon atom, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, like the diagram on the right there, of a glucose molecule. So this could be sort of like an algebraic formula to figure out a carbohydrate, uh, where n would equal uh, whatever number you choose. Um, so if you think about this, we have C6H12O6. The question is, does this sugar glucose have a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio? Well, if you break it down, you'll see there's 6 carbons to 12 hydrogens. So 6 to 12, or 1 to 2. 1 to 2. And, and then one, uh, 6 oxygens, so that'd be 1 to 2 to 1. So if you answered, yes, yay, you're right. What are carbohydrates? 
<clears throat> well, we've been referring to some uh, these simple sugars, these simple carbohydrates. An example of that is glucose. We've drawn it as a ring, like um, like this. Uh, see Notice that? how many sides it has. Do you know what shape that is? Does this look familiar? It's a hexagon. Remember the mouth picture? Pizza mouth? So carbohydrates often have carbon atoms that are bonded to make rings. And some of these diagrams will show that the ring structures resemble pentagons or hexagons. Glucose is always a hexagon, looking at the diagram on the, on the top there. Fructose, a sugar often found in a lot of fruits. Is the same carbon hydrogen oxygen ratio one to two to one it has six carbons 12 hydrogens and six oxygens but it's two little groups hanging off but they've just sort of changed shape here a little bit instead of just one group hanging off for the glucose but it, they each have one two three four five six carbons and fructose one two three four five six carbons and glucose so they have the same molecular formula. So it's like taking those building blocks and just sort of slightly altering the structure. But they, all, they both have that ring shape, that same ring shape. Here's a term that you will need to know for the end of course exam. This is in your vocabulary list. Carbohydrates are often referred to as a saccharide. Where does that word come from, you may wonder? Greek. Ooh, it's Greek. Mm -hmm. There you have it. That's the root. That's the root. Sakar. 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 So in biology, we often refer to sugars as saccharides. And there are three categories. I believe this is question number three. You're supposed to draw and label a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, and a polysaccharide. If you think about the root of that, mono means, well, what does that mean? One. One. Di, di, two, and poly, many, many. So let's take a little closer look at each. Simple sugars, otherwise known as simple carbohydrates. Let's bring the next one. So mono meaning containing one sugar unit. And some examples of those are the ones we've already shown you, like glucose and fructose. Here's a picture of glucose, and it has that one simple shape of a that hexagon-like shape. So for a monosaccharide in my journal, I would draw it as a simple hexagon, and this is how we've been representing it in class. Monosaccharide, just one subunit. Monosaccharides are monomers. One piece, mono, versus a polymer, which is many monomers repeating one after another, linked together like boxcars of a train. Or beads on a necklace. So monomers are small repeating molecules that make up large molecules called polymers, many mers. All right. Now, here, disaccharide. We've already talked about a monosaccharide. Here's an example of a disaccharide, or two examples. Sucrose, that's like temp simple, uh, that's table sugar, the white crystal that you put on your Wheaties. This diagram shows every atom involved, but in your journals you don't have to track every single atom unless you're interested. You might just draw it as two hexagons bound together. That could be your disaccharide. Lactose is another disaccharide, which many of you already know where that comes from. This is why milk tastes sweet. And why some of you may not be able to digest this molecule, and thus you are light lactose intolerant. So a polysaccharide is the term we've already learned in class is a complex carbohydrate. Because it has many pieces. We've studied cellulose, also called fiber, starch, which is a long chain of glucose molecules built by plants, and glycogen, which is somewhat the animal's equivalent of starch. It's another long 
chain of glucose molecules. So let's look at those three more closely. Starch. This, these di three diagrams are greatly simplified. In reality, a starch molecule, a cellulose molecule, and a glycogen molecule has hundreds of these simple glucose mo um, monomers linked together to make a huge polymer. Hundreds instead of... What is that? Six? Six. Now, we have been studying cellulose and we've been drawing it with two bonds in between each. To make it look extra burly, thus the, harder to break apart. The double bonds prevent our stomachs from digesting it. But the bacteria found within the gut of some animals like cows and sheep. Or goats, the four guts of. Yeah. Can break apart the cellulose molecule. Oh, and the last one was oh. uh, glycogen. Glycogen. And glycogen is the animal equivalent of starch. We don't animals don't make starch molecules, and instead, they make glycogen. And notice the difference. It's still a, a long linked thing, but there's also some branches breaking off. But it serves the same purpose for animals as it does for um, as starch does for plants. So we can find starch in potatoes, in oatmeal before we cook it, grains. Grains. Rice. What's what do we eat that has glycogen in it, Mr. Stockman? Uh, Marshmallows. Oh, oh, really? Isn't that interesting? Mm, mm. Is that true? I don't know. It's we'll have to test that. Yeah. Somebody please Google that. What, find you. out where what do we eat that has glycogen in it? Hmm. Functions of carbohydrates. This potato stores starch in its tubers. That's what we call potatoes. A tuber. So we eat them. And that's actually how we, uh, it's like a stored food. Um, if we need to access some of the glucose in there, we can start clipping it apart in our cells. So for me digging up this potato plant, I might then take them and cook them and put a little salt and pepper on them and dip them in ketchup and yum yum. However, this plant doesn't necessarily fry them up in a pan like I might, but instead just with, when it needs extra extra stored energy or stored food, it would um, use up some of the starch that's stored within the tubers. So the plant would start clipping off these monomer simple sugars and start accessing the energy from it by breaking it apart and using it for building blocks and energy. <clears throat> Another polysaccharide is cellulose. And the function of cellulose in um, in plants is structural. It's what strengthens the cell walls in plant cells and thus makes plants have that tough um, fiber that holds it all together. Imagine, uh, look out a window right now and look at a tree. Imagine if that tree had no cellulose, it'd be floppy laying on the ground. And if you went over and took, picked up a branch or a stick and tried to chew on it, I mean, you'd be chewing it for a long time to, to try to break up and break apart that cellulose. It's just a really tough molecule. You could grab a branch and whip it like a rope. You could. That'd be funny. Yeah, it would be fun. Jump rope with it. Yeah. Thus, you can't digest it. At least humans can't digest it. So when you eat fiber, it just goes, it exits the same way that it entered. You don't break up the molecule. So it will travel straight through you. It actually doesn't exit the same place that it enters. Oh, could you imagine if it did? Oh, that would oh be, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to think so about that. This is somebody's mouth. It goes in the mouth and out of somewhere else. Yeah, there's a hole on the other side that goes out of. Yeah, there we go. All right. Again, here are the questions. Question one, what is the difference between atoms and molecules? Question two, what elements are in carbohydrates and in what ratio will they be found? Question number three, make a labeled sketch of a mono, dye, and polysaccharide. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you in class. Bye.